Now today is going to be a very bittersweet kind of day. Well, yes, it is going to be absolutely amazing finally being able to show you guys this amazing new Tegu that we have and the start of the Tegu breeding project, my first year actually attempting to breed these guys. There's also a downside. And of course, if you guys didn't watch this video, it is going to be the fact that legislation may impose the fact that I may have to lose these Tegus. We'll be talking more about that and showing off these amazing guys here right now. Stick around, we're gonna be showing off some absolutely beautiful high white Tegus and subscribe if you're new, would love to have you around. Let's get into it. But before we make the trek over into the reptile building, I got something to show you, and that's going to be a brand new merch drop. That's right, folks, we've got two more designs. Number one, including this. And this one starting out is going to be the Cresty Cult merch. Absolutely fantastic design. My boys really knocked it out of the park with this one. Just check this out. Absolutely beautiful in the front. Of course, we got the logo going on in the back. It is awesome, but that is not all, folks. We've got one more, which is actually going to be and showing off our last design, we have the Toke Viking Brotherhood. Just take a look at this, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Same as before, we've got the nice logo going on in the back, man. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm really torn on which one I like. These are absolutely my new favorite designs, but I'm not sure which one I like more. So uh, drop me a comment in the comment section. What is your favorite one? Are you part of the Cresty Cult, or are you gonna be part of the Toke Viking Brotherhood? If you're interested in getting one of these shirts, you can go right down there. I've got the little band for the Teespring store. We've got a couple of other awesome designs down there. And with all that being said, guys, let's get into it with a quick spin transition. Ooh, alrighty, back in the building again. Two videos in a row. That's uh, that's pretty cool, pretty cool. But without further ado, you know I'm not gonna add any more filler. Uh, let's hop into this enclosure and check these guys out. Here we have our pair of Tegus. Uh, the one on top is of course our Florida wild caught girl that we've got for about a year, a year and a half now, something along those lines, who's doing absolutely fantastic. And if she could get off, she is not tame whatsoever still. So I expect her to come up here and kind of lunge at me. Uh, she's not super friendly, but absolutely beautiful. Check out that high white that she has. You can see she's defense posturing right now. She's ready to make a little charge. But check out the high white in the face. The head is looking absolutely fantastic. And then all around the body is looking great as well. Just an absolute fantastic girl for high white tegus. And if we take a little scoot up over here, we get to see, whoops, we get to see the male. Big Blue, and I gotta keep an eye on her because she's a little bit fresh. But here we have our new male Tegu, and just take a look at him. Also not very excited for the camera. <laughs> now, just a quick FYI, we did, whoops. Sorry guys. We did end up turning the basking lights on. I noticed in the last video it made kind of a bit of a glare, so we turned those off just to make a better video. They have lights, you can see they have lights. They're just off for like the 10 minutes it's gonna take me to film. But just take a look at these guys, man. Absolutely fantastic animals. Oh, it's okay, buddy. Hey. Look at him. Beautiful. Some of those scratches, big buddy. There you go. <laughs> this is going to be our new Tegu Blue. Now, Blue actually came for me from Derek's Reptiles. He's pretty local to me when we hit up our last expo. Oh, he's getting a little feisty. When we hit up our last expo, uh, he had the Tegu. You know, I really wanted to mix some stuff instead of just doing black and whites at the time. I wanted to do something like a blue cross. So blue is actually a blue and black and white cross Tegu. An absolutely fantastic specimen, man. Let's let's get a little bit of a close up on that. Just look at that, folks. Absolutely breathtaking. Those high whites, that beautiful big bulky head, an awesome Tegu, nonetheless. Honestly, when it comes to the Tegu pairing, I did not think it was going to happen this soon. I thought Bertha was going to go to probably around now, maybe a week or two from now, before she was actually going to wake up and we, gonna, we were going to start pairing. Uh, however, that was not the case. Bertha actually woke up, I believe, in February, potentially. If you're on Patreon, you guys know the exact date that she got up, but I can't really remember off the top of my head. But she woke up fairly soon. She was ready. She was scratching out the door, ready to come out. So I figured, you know what? Let's pair them and see what happens. Introduction went very well. Uh, as you can see, they've been working really well together. They bask together. Uh, she likes to lay on him. They eat fine together. And everything in between, they've been doing really good together, which is awesome to see. 
Now I've yet to notice any problems when it comes to Bertha in blue. Obviously Bertha is going to be a little bit more sketched out right now because she just just does not like humans. But blue, blue is really good. You can see he's just sitting back. This is actually a, a CHE bulb, so there's still a little bit of heat. So they're still wanting the bask, which is uh, why they're both laying right there. Oh man, look at this guy. This guy is an absolute behemoth. Let's get a little bit. Oh, it's okay, buddy. Come on over. Just look at this impressive animal. Blue is somewhere around four feet, I'd give or take. And Bertha's a little bit smaller, somewhere around the three foot age. It's funny to see, you know, Bertha was like our biggest tegu at this point, but now that we have Blue, it's funny to see just how much smaller she is into comparison. This is a really big dude. Derek did an absolute fantastic job getting this guy together, and he is just a beautiful animal. One thing you definitely notice inside its enclosure is it doesn't really have a lot of substrate. Unfortunately, um, I can never get substrate in winter, the ones that I need. Obviously, the topsoil, the sand, stuff like that. All my local Home Depots just stopped selling them during the winter. We're finally getting back into spring in about a week or two, and I believe they're going to have it restocked. We're definitely going to put a lot more substrate. So I've actually channeled most of the substrate. You can see, I mean, this is... This, it's it's pretty thick over here. Uh, however, I kind of located all of the substrate to this area where in the basking zone, it's just a little bit less substrate. They also, for some reason, where the basking spot is, they love to dig. You can kind of see that it's just a little bit, there's like less substrate. They kind of dig it all out over to here. But I think that's kind of funny. I'm just, just trying to hide underneath him. Absolutely wonderful. Just take a look at these guys. Okay, she's getting a little upset with me. Yeah, folks, these are our new Tegus. Well, I guess the one new Tegu, Bertha's been here for a minute, and the new Breeding Project 2022. Absolutely fantastic about this. Obviously, we're gonna need a bit more substrate in here. I need to go get some hay to make a nesting area. We've got a backup enclosure over there for the male whenever she decides to lay and gets a little bit guarded. Uh, obviously, female Tegus, after laying, they actually do guard their nest, so Bertha, already being a super fresh animal is going to be even fresher when she's laid in guarding her nest. At that point where I separate them and then have the fun adventure of trying to pull the eggs out of the nest while Bertha's trying to snap at me. It's gonna be fun, gonna be a good time. I, I bet you guys just can't wait for that part. Yeah, if I can just put the camera down. Yep, so this is Big Blue. Very happy to finally introduce him to the family. Stay up, stay up here, buddy. Absolutely fantastic to see him with the family now. Um, obviously, man, we've talked a lot about it. I have such an affinity for the Tegu lizard. This guy is no different. <laughs> He's not very excited about getting picked up, but he is absolutely fantastic. All right, buddy, I'll let you back down. I'll let you back down. Psych, you're getting picked back up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, he tricked me. All right, buddy. All right, you get down there tegu's enclosure but this brings us to our next topic at hand and that of course is going to be what's really happening with the tegu project now last video uh if you guys saw I'll link a little card right there uh we have a big decision to make our giant plan to move to north carolina has kind of had a wrench thrown through it due to the fact that they have now banned the tegu lizard and the tegu ban will go into effect before i'm able to actually move to that state absolutely love tegu so much so that if we had a successful breeding project like if we got successful eggs and hatched those babies i was looking at dropping somewhere around eight to twelve thousand dollars on a tegu project getting a bunch of various morphs and really diving deep into it uh, that's just how much i love the tegu lizards but now it's like it's a very tough thing on how to figure out you know what to do you know do, do i continue trying to do this and trying to find another place to move that fits all the things that i need or do i just give up on this dream and continue on with my other projects don't get me wrong i absolutely love the tegu lizards they are fantastic however there's a lot more species here and there's a lot of other projects i could go to that money or that route to we continue on with our argus projects there's multiple other monitor lizards i've been looking into breeding it's just like it's such a weird spot that I'm in now on figuring out, you know, do I find a new place to move and expand on tegus? However, that would kind of give up my dream of working with other exotic animals. Over here at DBCB Exotics, we're just that. We're for exotic animals, not just specifically reptiles. And North Carolina, at least in this point in time, has the most lax exotic laws where we can get things like into primates, lemurs, monkeys, rheas, ostriches, a bunch of other things that I'm really interested in. Ocelots, bobcats, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm looking at getting into the near future and 
it, it's a very difficult decision where do I give up on my dream to potentially get all these incredible animals just to pursue my dream of tegus? It puts me at a very hard crossroad, and there's a big fork in the road right now. Come on, bud. You licking my boots? Hmm? That's a good boy. Get those little scratches, Mr. Blue. Did want to keep you guys updated on what my decision is, and that is at this point in time, there really is no decision being made. I've been diving into a lot of other states and what could actually potentially be a new house or a new state that we can move to. I've been listening to your guys' comment suggestions. Um, some of you guys have made some good points, and there are some potentials. Um, others of you don't know your reptile laws, and you were like, you can keep this and this up here, but then after a quick Google search, I found you can't keep any of that stuff. So some of you guys need to check out your fish and wildlife because um, some of that stuff you're talking about ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> And of course, before we wrap up, I want to address some other stuff. A lot of people have been talking about, oh, Dakota, you know, just, uh, basically people are telling me to smuggle the Tegus in North Carolina and just not talk about them at all, which is, um, it's not a smart thing to do. I, I, I just want to clarify, fish and wildlife is not a thing that should be taken lightly. Uh, fish, the way fish and wildlife handles their illegal animals, or if you're keeping illegal exotics, um, it's not like they knock on your door or ring you up and say, hey, you have this animal, you kind of got to get rid of it or else, you know, we're going to have to do something. Uh, it's not like that at all. They actually, they raid your property. <laughs> I, I know of a person a couple of counties over um, up in Maine who had a koi pond, right? And they raided her like full AR-15s, the whole shebang for kois in a koi pond. Fish and wildlife does not mess around. And here's the really detrimental part about that. So what happens with fish and wildlife is it, people think like, oh, say, you know, keep tegus, but just say it's a different, say it's a blue tongue skink. They're not going to know the difference. Well, that's really the issue. They don't know the difference. And it's not like they're going to they're not going to be like, well, I can't say it's a Tegu for sure, so go ahead, you can keep it. They're going to detain all those animals. They would probably, like, if I was doing stuff, they would probably detain, like, half of my animals because they're trying to figure out what's what, keep them in holding, charge me with a bunch of stuff. I'd have to fight it in court, wait weeks to months to get those animals back, and then at that point, some of those animals would be dead because who, what facility can hold, you know, 20 big Tegus or 20 big monitor lizards, whatever you have you. It's, um... It's not as simple as like, yeah, dude, just keep them and don't say anything. It'll be fine. I'm not taking that risk, my guys. It's way too much heat to just to keep Tegu lizards and potentially lose so many animals and face tens of thousands of dollars in fines for those animals. Not worth it. Not worth it to me, unfortunately. I love the Tegu. I absolutely love the Tegu. That is also not an option. We're not trying to do anything illegal over here at DBCB. Exotic. I want to keep everything in the books because eventually I do want to open my own exotic zoo. And so I want to be kosher with all the legislation, all the government stuff, however much bullshit it might be. I do want to keep in contact with it and keep on the straight line with that because of my dreams that I want to expand DBCB exotics from this reptile breeding business into an actual zoo. That's my shtick. I, I, I had too many people over there being like, yeah, Dakota, just do it like this we're playing by the books over here at dbcb exotics i apologize but this is my full source of income it's not just a hobby and if i could have the potential to lose half of my animals that make me money and how to keep me survive and keep this whole uh project going it, it's just not worth it a little update on what's going on over here have not made any final decisions we'll, we'll have to make some sort of decision here relatively soon however at this point we don't even have the money for a down payment yet we haven't even started selling animals so i still have a little bit of time before i need to start thinking about okay where are we going to live what decision are we going to make but until that point in time here are the incredible tegu lizards guys absolutely fantastic little dudes uh we'll hopefully be getting ba a babies in 2022 and having babies for sale at uh, that point it could potentially be our first clutch of tegu babies and our very last clutch of tegu babies so get them while you can when we have them but just look at these guys look at the high white man absolutely fantastic these guys are incredible definitely can't wait for tegu babies man oh man raising some little little dudes 
it's gonna be awesome. I'm very excited for it. And that's gonna wrap it up, folks. What do you guys think about the Tega? How, how do you like blue? I think blue is just an absolutely fantastic game, but let, let me know in the comment section. What do you think of this new Tegu and the Tegu project for 2022? As always, folks, uh, we really did talk about these Tegus and talked a lot more into the Tegu breeding in depth on my Patreon page. We've been doing some short little background clips. If that's something you're interested in and you want to dive in further into my Tegu breeding project, make sure to check that link in the description down below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at DBCB Exotics. We'll see you next time. I gotta turn some basking lights on for some Tegus, but until then, goodbye.